Hola, I'm Fivers and welcome to Grimlight. In today's video, I'm gonna create a tier list for assassins. And before I start doing it, I want to make it clear that this tier list will be based on my own experience and opinion after playing Grimlight since day one. So like any other tier list, it won't be 100% accurate, but I'm sure it will be good enough to help new players to figure out which heroes are worth leveling up. I have divided the tier list in five different tiers. D, the worst, C, average, B, good, a pretty good and S the best. I want to say that in Grimlight almost every hero is useful and that's why I have called the tier C average, because the heroes in that tier are still fine. The only heroes that I don't recommend to level up at all are the heroes in tier D. Let's do it. As you can see, we only have 5 heroes in this class. Assassins are a special class in my opinion. They are not that easy to play as warriors, but if you organize your team properly, they will have a really important role in the fight. Starting from the bottom, in D tier we have Hansel. Hansel is a 3 star to cause water assassin. What to say about the poor Hansel? He is suffering the same problem as Gretel in the mage tier list. He has really really bad stats. I know that he just cost 2 crystals to deploy, but I don't think he is worth those crystals. Because of his low stats, his active ability doesn't deal damage at all, he is so squishy, he doesn't have a passive, and he is not even decent if you play him with Gretel. In C tier we have Puss in Boots. C is fine, but not incredible. Puss in Boots is a 4 star 2 cost nature assassin. As Gretel, C is a 2 cost hero, so don't expect incredible stats for this cost, but at least they are good enough. The damage of her active ability is not incredible either, but she will knock up the enemy 4 times, so this could be helpful sometimes. Her passive deals damage to a single target and gives her 10% evasion, stacking twice, so she can gain 20% evasion, plus the 10% evasion of her trait, she has a good natural amount of evasion that will make her survive longer. In B tier we have Jong Gu Chi. I really want to put him higher, but his kit doesn't really let me do it. Jong Gu Chi is a 5 star 3 cost light assassin. He is the second assassin with the highest attack, but he is still far away from the first one. But he has the lower attack speed among assassins, just one. His active ability deals true damage in a small area while greatly knocking enemies back. It's a really good ability, and thanks that he deals true damage, he will deal a really good amount of damage. The problem is that Jong Gu Chi is missing a teleport to hit the enemy back row, and instead he will deal this damage to the front row, and he will receive all the damage because he will be on the front row of the team. He is an imposter assassin. He actually works more like a warrior, but he has higher damage but a really low defense that doesn't let him survive on the front row at all. Here is where his trait will activate and he will teleport to the weakest ally and revive with 50% HP, but once again he will walk to the front row instead of attacking the back row. His passive is really good, but mostly in PvE. He doesn't really have time to stack up his passive in PvP. So yeah, he has some really good things, but he is missing that ability to reach the enemy back row and avoid the front row to receive less damage and attack the weakest enemies. In A tier we have Cheshire Cat. She is a really good hero in PvP. Cheshire Cat is a 4 star 3 cost dark assassin. Her stats are pretty fine for being a 3 cost. Her active ability doesn't deal that much damage to a single target, but she attacks to a small area. The important thing is that she gains haste, gaining so much attack speed for 5 seconds. This helps her a lot to deal more damage. The only problem that I see here is that she doesn't deal true damage. Her passive teleports her to the enemy with lowest HP after 5 seconds of combat. She will deal damage to him and she will stun the enemy for 3 seconds. And that's not all, Cheshire will have 40% increase evasion for 5 seconds. In my opinion, this is exactly the type of effect that Jong Chi is missing. She also has the 10% evasion trait as all the assassins, and she also has an extra 20% critical damage, because yes, she is a pretty decent 3 cost hero. Finally, in S tier we have Kaguya. Kaguya is a 5 star 4 cost dark assassin. She is without any doubt the best assassin of all of them. She has the highest attack, the highest defense, and the highest HP among assassins. 
The only stat that is a bit lower is her attack speed. Instead of 1.3, she has 1.2. Still fine. Just to let you know how high her attack is, she is the second one with the highest attack of the whole game. The only hero that has higher attack than her is the Beast, a 4 star 6 cost nature warrior. Kaguya only costs 4 crystals, 2 less than him, and she only has 11 less attack than him. So yeah, she has an extraordinary high attack. Her active ability deals an incredible amount of true damage to the farthest enemy in her lane and stunning him for 3 seconds if the enemy is able to survive. Every 5 hits, she deals more damage to her current target and inflicts physical weakness. And her traits are the natural 10% evasion of assassins and she will gain plus 3% attack for each fielded ally of the dark element. Another way to make her attack even higher. She is an incredible character in PvP and I also find a lot of use for her in PvE. And that's it for today's video, I hope that I have helped you. Thank you so much for watching, leave a comment, drop a like and consider subscribing if you wanna see more Grimlight content in the future and see you in the next video. Ciao!